What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and it's springtime and that means pasture maintenance. So we picked up some fertilizer this morning. We got 15 bags of 1648, I think. It's a special pasture blend. And we've also got the ATV warming up over here because we're also gonna spray something called Pasture Pro. But as I was warming up the ATV this morning, I, I locked the brakes on it and I actually broke the brake cable. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So the way you set the parking brake is you push this lever in and then you lock it like that. But unfortunately, my cable snapped. This is a 2006 model Suzuki Iger. So obviously I've had it for a very long time. We tried to maintain it, but you can't predict something like this is gonna happen. So we still have rear brakes, so we can still use it, but it's something to add to the list that we gotta fix out here at Piney Grove. So the reason we're spraying our pastures is because we're getting a lot of broadleaf weeds out here. What we're trying to do is just have this Bahia pasture grass right here. And the reason we want to spray and knock back these broadleaf weeds is not just because we want a pretty pasture out here, but also we hope to hay it this year. Pasture Pro is a selective herbicide, so it's only going to affect the broadleaf weeds out here. It won't affect the Bahia grass, but it also won't affect some of the noxious grasses that are out here. The only way you're gonna get rid of an invasive or a noxious grass in a grass pasture is you'd have to go around to each one of those grass clumps you don't want and spray with something like Roundup or get like a wick. And when that grass that you don't want to be in your pasture grows taller, you wick it so you only wet the grass that's taller and not the shorter but higher grass. This here is an example of a grass that probably won't be affected by this spray. Another weed I wanna make sure we take care of is something called a thistle. And I'm looking out here across the pasture now to see if there's an example of it. Every time we see a thistle head come up, we come out here and we kill that plant because thistles have this uh, like flowery seed head. And when those seeds get caught, caught in the wind, they'll just spread across your pasture. And thistle is it's not only um, not good for your pasture as far as making hay, but it's also like, it's really, really um, hard to pull out. It's got real, real big thorns on it that'll hurt your hands. Obviously it's not something good for any kind of animals to graze on. This is not a thistle, but it is a broadleaf weed that Pasture Pro will take care of. It's like the deer have actually eaten the top off of this weed. So this is an example of another weed we're trying to get rid of. It's called dog fennel. And this will actually get three and four foot tall and just completely take over our pasture. So a few things to remember when you're spraying. Number one, you wanna spray in the morning when the winds are lighter. You don't want your spray to go to your neighbors or to an undesirable area on your property, like your garden. You don't wanna kill off your garden. Number two, you don't wanna to spray too early in the morning when there's a lot of dew on the grasses and the weeds because that dew will keep the herbicide from sticking. Number three, you gotta keep the temperature in mind because some of these herbicides have a limit on the temperature you can apply. I think Pasture Pro is around 85 degrees, so we're doing it here this morning when it's closer to about 70 degrees. One thing we're gonna add to our herbicide is we're gonna add a surfactant, and what that surfactant does, it allows the herbicide to actually penetrate the weeds better because some weeds have like a waxy, glossy substance on them, and the surfactant will actually break that down and the third thing we're gonna to add to the tank is something called foam killer. And that's just so when you're filling the tank, the foam doesn't build up and it allows you to fill the tank completely with water so it's not half water and half foam. First thing I'm gonna do is hook water directly to the pickup side of the pump. Sometimes when these ATV sprayer pumps sit over the winter, like this one has, it uh, doesn't wanna catch its prime just by sucking from the bottom of the tank. So put some pressurized water on the suction side and do that before you get it full of chemicals. That way you're working on it when the tank is clean. The pump primed up nicely, so I reattached the pickup tube to the bottom of the tank. Now we're just gonna turn the pump on and just check all the functions. We got recirc here and we got the spray bar here. So the recirc is working. It's bringing water from the bottom of the tank and recirculating it up here. I close this off. The pump should shut off when it builds up pressure. And it did, it went to about 70 PSI. Now I'm gonna check the spray bar, make sure the nozzles aren't clogged. See that nozzle spraying out correctly. There's no cog portions. It's got a nice uniform pattern. Same thing on that side. Now that I know that the sprayer is operating properly, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some safety equipment, fill the tank halfway with water, put the chemicals in, put more water in it, and then let it circulate and get to spraying. So we're gonna go ahead and put one quart of Pasture Pro in the tank now. Now we use some FarmWorks Defoamer. We're not sponsored by anyone here. This is just what we picked up in Tractor Supply. And it basically says add enough until the foam is knocked down. I don't have any foam yet, so I'll put a little bit in here and then add more if I need it. Next, we'll add a little bit of surfactant. 
And as I mentioned earlier, that just breaks down the waxy substance on the weed so that the herbicide can penetrate it better. Now we agitate it, just pull it from the bottom of the tank, comes up through this tube right here and just agitates it and mixes it well and then we'll add water till it's full. As exciting as that may be, you won't see me get to fill the tank, but I did want to mention this hose that I bought. I just bought this three quarter inch diameter hose from the farm supply store. We're out here on a well and I don't want the well cycling as I'm using water around the farm. I've got one inch pipe coming from the well to all of my spigots and I don't want to constrict that with say a half inch hose. So I got this three quarter inch hose and that way when the well pump kicks on, it'll stay on instead of building up pressure because we don't have enough throughput. This filled up the tank real quick and there's no foam. That little bit of defoamer I used worked really well and now I have no foam and it's just sitting here circulating and now we're ready to go spray. I talked about the wind and I want to spray around this garden real quick before the wind picks up. So I'm going to knock this area out first. feel better now that that's done because the little bit of wind is coming from the north and I don't want it blowing on the garden, but I did all the way around the garden. And the reason you don't want overspray going on the garden is because those plants are broadleafs, just like the weeds we're trying to kill. And uh, we would end up knocking out a whole spring's worth of work. So with all this L-shaped area done, I can now focus on long straight runs across the whole pasture. And if you're watching this video because you're interested in how to spray with the ATV sprayer, this is a really, really simple process. We love this thing. We're not sponsored by Femco, Suzuki, or anyone. We've also had a Femco 25 gallon sprayer, but we found that to be a little bit too big for the ATV. It'll work and you'll get more work done or you'll get more coverage, but it makes the ATV very uh, back heavy. So it tends to wanna lift up on the front end. Well, let me show you real quick what I do when I'm driving. So obviously those are the controls for driving the ATV, but back here, the pump always is gonna maintain 60 PSI when the pump is on. So all you do is you take this lever and you flip it. And when you flip that lever, this fluid travels from here. If you follow it, it goes over here to the spray bar and it goes to one, two spray nozzles. And those spray nozzles put out like a V-shaped pattern on either side. So the ATV is maybe three foot wide, but you probably do five foot at a time. So over here where I did earlier, you can see there's a set of ATV tracks. Here's another set and here's another set. And I just stayed apart from the first set a couple feet. So there's a little bit of overlap. So ideally you wouldn't have any overlap. You would just start your spray where the other spray left off, but it's really hard to tell where that is. So I just look at the tire track, stay a foot or two away from there and I get good coverage and I won't have those little one or two foot strips going through the pasture here that have weeds while the rest of it is weed free. All right, I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse and you can watch me go down and work across here until I run out of spray. Then I'll go get another tank. If you're wondering if spraying your pasture will make it unsafe for animals, Pasture Pro has a component called 2,4-D and then another herbicide in it. And they have been around for a long time. And the manufacturer recommendation is one to two quarts per acre. So if you apply it per their recommendations, always read the label, don't rely on someone from YouTube telling you how to do something. But if you read the label, it says something to the effect of it can be grazed within hours. I don't know if it's one or two hours, I'll check the label later. They give lots of direction on how to spray. Spray in low wind conditions, don't spray immediately after a rain, don't mow for several days before you spray. There's a whole bunch of guidance on the most effective way and the safe way to spray. So if you follow the manufacturer's recommendation, I think you'll be fine. I'm a couple of weeks late getting to this because of weather and just things getting in the way of us getting out here on the farm and working. So some of these weeds have already gone to seed. I actually just dug up a thistle behind me there and that thistle had a full seed pod. And it's kind of like a dandelion where these seed pods have uh, a bunch of wispy, cottony type of substance and allow it to blow in the wind. So I was actually walking through the woods there picking up those thistle seeds. We pretty much got them eradicated out here at Piney Grove, but there's still onesies and twosies around. Mm -hmm. 
Well guys, I found another thistle. I think I found about four total. I'm gonna bring this one in close. I'm going up under and getting the roots. It's the only place you can really grab it. This one hasn't gone to seed yet, but you'll see all these seed heads right here. And those are the ones that become those puffy dandelion like things and spread these seeds all across your pasture. Every time we see one and we get rid of it, that's one less obviously that's here, but it also stops probably 200 more from coming up. I got the spraying all done. So it's time to put the spreader back on the ATV so we can spread out the fertilizer. First part we put on in this is this bracket right here. And then the actual spreader will slide into that. So the spreader just fits right in the socket here. And you take this tie strap and cinch it down to your racks on your ATV. And then that's it, it's, it's mounted. Well, except for the electrical, which is a toggle switch that runs to the cigarette lighter or the 12 volt. But when this strap is tightened, you'll see this come this way. That just keeps the weight of the fertilizer from pushing back on the spreader. You remember how this video started? I broke the, the brake cable on the ATV. Well, when I hooked up the ATV spreader and hooked the electrical line up to it, it, uh, it powered up, but it wouldn't spin because it has this little bearing in there that's susceptible to rust and fertilizer is very corrosive and it just wouldn't spin. So I had to take that little 12 volt motor apart. So this is the 12 volt motor. And inside of here, there's a small bearing and fertilizer can't get through this plate, but the dust gets up under here and finds its way inside this motor. And that's what froze up that bearing. Now she's back together and we can get to spreading. There's always something to fix out here on the farm. And spreading fertilizer is a lot easier from the operator seat as well. I just open the gate up at the bottom all the way and drive pretty much as fast as I can stand. And that seems to be the right amount of fertilizer to put out. So the hopper's pretty full and I don't see any clumps, so nothing should get bound up. I'm gonna do this section here by the garden first. I'm about six or 10 feet away from the garden. That's good on this side. It'll broadcast about the same amount on that side. I'll go all the way down, do a couple passes over here. And then from here over that way, I can just go 12 feet or so. Got a spinning plate, that's good. I got a handle on this side. I'll open this gate all the way. It'll start spewing fertilizer. I think I got that right, I don't know. After one round trip pass, let's see how much fertilizer we used. I just keep the paddle wheel spinning and then open the gate. When we look down inside here, we see we're about, probably right about here. So it looks like maybe half a 50 pound bag to go that way, half a 50 pound bag to come this way. I'll probably run out on the way back on this second trip, but that should get everything from that first pass down all the way to the woods line. So we got the second 100 pound load of fertilizer here to spread out. And this is going much quicker and it's a lot more fun than spraying. It's not technical, there's nothing to worry about. And uh, you actually kind of get a good breeze going riding the ATV. Also did up here by the house, between the house and the shed. That means I'll have to cut grass more, but we got Deb a zero turn. So that means Deb has to cut grass more. I was gonna make a separate video today about the garden, but I'm not gonna get a chance to work in it today. So let me just show you what we got going. This is Piney Grove's first garden. We've got some beans down here that will climb that trellis. We got squash. We got bush beans down there. We got some tomato plants here in the bucket. Those other buckets without the stakes are pepper plants. I really don't know what's past the red bucket down there. Two rows of sweet corn, half a row of beets, and I think the rest of the row in that row there, I think are watermelon and cantaloupe. I picked up some watermelon and cantaloupe seed at the farm store this morning when I picked up the fertilizer, and I was gonna plant that, but it looks like uh, my dad or my sister beat me to it. One thing that I'm doing and it's working out pretty good is I know where the grass is a little poor and where the soil is a little bit more rich as we go up and down this pasture. So I actually speed up where the grass is thick because I know it doesn't need as much fertilizer. And then I slow down where the grass needs more fertilizer. And that way I don't have to mess with the gate and it's coming out pretty much perfect down and back, down and back. And it puts out hundred pounds and then go fill up again.
All right, guys, the spring ritual here at Piney Grove is almost complete. We've got everything sprayed and almost everything fertilized, but we're gonna leave you with that. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. And remember, life's short, tractor hard. PG out.